As you read through this question, you'll notice that you're reading a bunch of different speeds. And in fact, they're asking for a third speed. And that's very typical of these kind of problems where we talk about relative velocity, where you have one object that's observed by two different observers, and these two observers are moving relative to one another. In the end, the whole thing mathematically boils down to a vector addition or subtraction. But to know whether you're adding or subtracting and what you're adding or subtracting, you kind of have to work through the English and the grammar. And that's kind of the crux of these type of problems. So to start to work through it, we have to be careful in labeling and identifying for each speed or velocity they're talking about who is observing and what is being observed. So here we have a cyclist traveling southeast along a road. So presumably the speed of the cyclist is relative to some stationary observer, which is referred to again towards the end. So we would say that the velocity of the cyclist relative to this observer is, if we put a north, south, east, west type deal here, it's going southeast. So that's this direction at 45 degrees, because it's exactly southeast, perfectly in the middle, at 15 kilometers per hour. And they also feel the wind, and wind, it's basically just air moving, so we call air, I guess. And the cyclist feels this wind. So in this case, this is how much, or how fast, the air is moving relative to the cyclist. And so we do, again, north, south, east, west, and with wind, sometimes they get a little tricky English-wise and say it's blowing from the southwest, whereas this is traveling. Traveling implies it's traveling towards, right? That's why I go from the middle out. But this one is from the southwest. So from the southwest, you head this way. So that's the direction of the wind at 25 kilometers per hour relative to the cyclist. Then at the end, they ask to a stationary observer, what is the speed and direction of the wind? So that's referring to the velocity of the wind or the air relative to the stationary observer. So oftentimes with these relative motion question, relative velocity question, you end up with three different velocity and they look very similar. So how do we keep track of where to put what? Um, labeling who's doing the observing and what's being observed is a great first step. And I tend to refer to this following equation, which is that some object being observed in frame one is equal to how that object is observed in frame two minus how frame one is moving with respect to frame two. Personally, I like this form because I have object minus frame one. And in this uh, right-hand side, everything is observed with respect to frame two. What you'll notice is that the object is the only thing out of the three that gets observed twice. So in this case, the object here is the air. Frame two is the only thing that observed twice. So frame two here is the stationary observer. And whatever is the third thing, which just does the observing once and gets observed once, right? Because it's a cyclist, right? It's observed once and observing once. So then this lets us put these things in the right spot. So that's A, C. It's equal to A, O minus C, O, right? We have our three different things placed in the right spot. That does give you the correct equation. But we don't, we're not solving for V, A, C. We're solving for, for V, A, O. So let's rearrange. And it turns out that this becomes a vector addition. And vector addition in, in this case, 2D, the textbook, I think, suggests a geometric kind of method using cosine law and sine law. I'm not a big fan of that. I always just like to use breaking down into components and summing by components, because that's what we always do. And that also accommodates as many vectors as you want. So then our first job is to properly define and break down our given velocities into i and j components. So again, we have southeast 15 km per hour. 
And it's really up to us what we call positive x and positive y. So there's no reason in this particular case not to do the most conventional one, positive x uh, to the east, positive y to the north. So then if we break them down like that, then we have a positive x component, cosine 45, negative y component, and everything is in kilometers an hour. VAC was from the southwest, psi English, but we use the same corner system. And again, it's cosine 45 degrees, but these case, they're both positive. Sorry for being a little crammy there but they're both positive, positive i, positive j. Then we just do vector addition. Using these i, j, k things, we just know we add the i's, j's, and k's separately. And because of that, sometimes I like to write out my things stacked up upon one another. So then the i's line up and the j's line up. So just blasting through using a calculator, really, showing some extra steps here. And that would be the velocity of the air relative to the station observer or the wind. And that's a perfectly legitimate way to express that velocity, but then they wanted speed and direction. So the speed being the magnitude of my velocity used by Pythagoras. And since everything is in kilometers an hour, we didn't actually bother changing it into meter per second. Then for the direction, we note that we have a positive I component and a positive j component where positive x is east and that's north. So if we find this particular angle here, then we can say that this vector is so many degrees north of east, right? We start east and we travel north. This angle, of course, made up of a right angle triangle, we can use arctangent. And it's no surprise that the units cancel out. So just kind of writing to everything nice and neat up top. The wind travels at 29 kilometers per hour at 14 degrees north of east, right? The math here, not terribly complicated, very standard vector addition stuff, break down the components, sum, and that's it. But it's really the kind of working through the grammar and the English to get the different velocity and put them in the right spots.